Hey buddies, it's me, Scarlett, your YouTube big sister, and I'm here to start a brand new video series just for you guys called Scarlet Studies, where I do the homework that you don't want to do. Today, we are studying crushes. Specifically, the science behind crushes and what happens in your brain when you have a crush. Let's talk about your brain. It's brain chess, it's brain time. It's brain time. So I'm assuming if you've clicked on this video that you either have had a crush in the past or maybe you have a crush right now. Whether you call it a crush or an infatuation or puppy love or maybe you even feel like you're totally falling in love with somebody, what happens inside your brain is the same. And it's real, you guys. Brain chemistry is not messing around. Yes, that's right. I said chemistry. Crushes actually come down to three things. Brain chemistry, neuroscience and psychology. Now the human brain is really, really complicated and we actually don't know that much about it. But there are some things that we're pretty sure about. One of the most helpful things is something called the triune brain model. In the 1960s, American neuroscientist Paul McLean came up with this model and the way that he explained it was, over time, starting with the very first humans, our brains have evolved and they've evolved into three Three main parts. The first part is the primal brain, also more scientifically known as the basal ganglia. The second part is the emotional brain, also known as the limbic system. And the third part is the rational brain, also known as the neocortex. Now, of course, our brains are much more complicated than just like three perfect systems, but this three brain model is still useful when we're talking about things that involve all parts of our brain, like crushes. Let's go. Your primal brain was most helpful back in the days when we hunted for our food and we lived in the wilderness. The goal of almost every day was to survive and not just to survive as one person. The goal was to survive as a species. The hypothalamus is a part of your primal brain that helps you figure out when to eat food. It helps you decide whether to fight or flight when there's a threat. This part of your brain also controls things that you never have to think about, like breathing or your heart beating. So what does it have to do with crushes? Studies show that when you think about your crush, your hypothalamus is activated, which means there's a part of your primitive brain that thinks making sure things go well with your crush is the key to whether you will survive or not. Like it's life or death, whether or not your crush says that they will go with you to the middle school dance. Like legitimately a part of your brain thinks that you might die if they say no. That's not really the case. But the primitive part of your brain is really, really focused on pairing up humans together into couples so that the species can continue. The hypothalamus uses a chemical called norepinephrine to keep you on your toes. Norepinephrine can also actually cause physical sensations in your body. That means that when you see your crush or think about them, your heart might race, your palms might get sweaty. So if you feel like you're gonna die, if your crush tells you they don't like you, it's just your hypothalamus lying to you. Not to be rude, the hypothalamus keeps you alive and we have to respect it for what it does, but sometimes it just kind of gets in the way and we just have to tell it to shush. Next, of course, is the emotional brain. This part of our brain is so cool. It helps us recognize people's facial expressions, it helps us build long-term memories, and it also deals, obviously, with our emotions. One part of our emotional brain is the striatum, or striatum. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. And the striatum is associated with this very, very powerful chemical that you've probably heard of called dopamine. As opposed to norepinephrine that we talked about with our primal brain making us feel anxious, dopamine makes us feel awesome. It gets released when we eat a really delicious piece of pie. It gets released when we see a cute dog on a walk and the owner's like, yeah, you can pet him, he's really friendly. And then we pet the dog, it's the best. Not only does dopamine make you feel good, it also motivates you to continue seeking things that make you feel good. One of the things that it can help motivate you to do is be around your crush. And once you are around your crush, there's another chemical at play, 
Etogenous opioids get you addicted to that feeling of having a crush. This chemical is actually really cool. It's associated with this part of your brain called the insula, and the insula tells you when you're getting rewarded for doing something right. So it's like when you're seeing a crush, you're smelling delicious brownies because of the dopamine, and you feel like you're winning an Oscar because of the etogenous opioids. Brownies and an Oscar, all in one, just because you're seeing your crush. I mean, no wonder that you can't stop thinking about them. And finally, it's the part of our brain that we feel we have the most control over, the rational brain. Our neocortex is kind of in charge of, well, thinking, which means that it's different from person to person. Our neocortex loves to organize things into categories. People who are like me, people who aren't like me. Floofy dogs and not so floofy dogs. I'm thinking a lot about dogs. B. I consider B a non-floofy dog, but she does have stinky breath. So she's a stinky breath dog, but a non-floofy dog. So I'm gonna put her in these two categories in my brain because that's what my neocortex does. It helps you form opinions, recognize patterns, make decisions, all of that stuff that we feel defines who we are as people. And it's also right where neuroscience meets psychology. Crushes tend to form early on in relationships before we actually really know who our crush is. Imagine going to the bookstore every week and there's always this cute person who smiles at you and they make you feel really special. What if you notice on their jean jacket they have a Disney patch? So then your brain is gonna start jumping to conclusions about that person. They love Disney. I love Disney. That must mean that they love romance and music and adventure. Oh, we have so much in common. And you've actually never even spoken to this person. This person becomes then a symbol, a symbol of who you want to be, the type of people you want to hang out with, your future. And they don't have anything to do with any of this. So now you're probably asking, why does my brain do this? It's exhausting. Well, science tells us that crushes are actually pretty healthy. They help us figure out what we do like about other people without the stakes being too high. You don't necessarily have to find out if that person reciprocates your feelings. Your crush feelings are safe inside your heart until you either decide to make a move or until you find out something about that person that destroys that whole image you created in your mind. Like let's say that cute person at the bookstore with the Disney patch is like super rude to a salesperson one day and all of a sudden them smiling at you doesn't really make you feel special anymore and voila, the crush is gone. Now, if the person is too distant for you to really see their flawed humanity, sometimes the crush can be really excruciating. Maybe this person lives far away, or maybe they're a celebrity who you've never met. And the more you're kept from that person, the stronger your feelings become. It's like a, like a finger trap, you know those things that you put your fingers in, and then the harder you try to pull them out, the more intense it grips onto your fingers. If a crush like that lasts way too long and becomes like obsessive, then it becomes something that's not a crush. It becomes something called limerence. That is the extreme. That's a crush, like I said, that lasts for years and that prevents you from living your life or moving on or meeting other people. But for the most part, crushes, no matter how intense they feel, are normal. All of us have had a crush at some point, and believe it or not, we have all been the subject of somebody else's crush. So what can you do about a crush? Let's say you're too scared to talk to this person, there's nothing you can do, the crush is just there and you want it gone. Well, I wish there was like a magic pill you could take to make the crush go away, but the best thing to do is to really break down what it is you like about this person. You might find that what you actually like about them is the way they make you feel. And once you realize that you can make yourself feel special or desired or amazing or any number of things, then you don't need to attach them to that person anymore. You know, maybe that person is more somebody that you idolize and maybe you'd like to be like them. That kind of information is very valuable to you as you move on and as you meet new amazing people, crushes, friends, future partners, whatever. Just enjoy your crush. 
Have fun. We sometimes miss those feelings once we get into long-term relationships with people. It's the beginning part that's so, so exciting. Whether or not it works out, it doesn't really matter. Thank you guys so much for watching Scarlet Studies. I hope you learned something. I hope that this helps you deal with your crush. I need inspiration. What do you wanna learn? Let me know in the comments because I need new stuff to study. And I will see you next time. Don't forget to turn in your homework on time. Bring your worksheets. Bring, bring all the number two pencils. Make sure they're all sharpened. Bye buddies.